Okay, we are back. This is Tech Math 2. We are looking at the packet, uh, the handout C from chapter 14, dealing with parabolas, and I'm going to show you some stuff on the graphing calculator. So let's take a look. Um, parabolas are second degree equations create a parabola. It looks sort of like a um, a curved, I don't want to say a U because it's got a point where it's no longer increasing and no longer decreasing. So it actually comes to a point. So it's not like exactly like a U and it's getting infinitely wider as we go. Um, what's kind of cool about it is there's a focal point on every parabola. There's a directrix and a focal point, meaning this is sort of how, um, in the real world, how your satellite dish gets, it's, it's parabolic in shape, meaning it goes, the waves come in and hit that curve, and all of them are concentrated to that little ball in the, uh, s near the center that, you know, it's on a little stick. And so that's how um, satellite dishes work. It's also how flashlights work in reverse. If you put a bulb right here in a parabolic dish and it directs the light. That's the difference between a flashlight where you can point it at things and like a lantern where you just have to hold it up and get it close to what you want to look at. Um, the, the curve directs the light. Also, how your mirror that magnifies works and all of that kind of stuff. All right, so um, parabolas, second degree equations are, you, you find these a lot in nature. Um, not only for the curves and things like that that we use for satellites and lights and things like that, but also uh, that's how things fall back to Earth um, with no wind resistance where if something gets launched, it goes up and comes back down in the same direction. And so that's parabolic in shape. So there are lots and lots and lots of applications for parabolas. So we're not going to um, be really heavy in the applications here. We're going to look at um, the pieces of parabola. So the highest or lowest point on a parabola is called its vertex. Um, if it opens down, it's the highest point. If it opens up, it's the lowest point. And so this is standard form, sometimes referred to as vertex form. You just pull this number out, negative 2 and pull this number out, negative three. Oh wait, no, the opposite of that number, sorry. So two, negative three is the vertex of that um, equation. So anytime there's a second degree equation, meaning there's a power there, see this is first degree, y equals x squared in some version, it's gonna be a parabola. And so when we look at the parabola, it is whatever makes this be zero. So don't make the mistake that I made when I initially wrote it down. I put negative two, negative three. Um, it's the opposite of that number. So in this case, two would make this go to zero. So two, negative three. But it's not a lot of work to find the vertex when it's in vertex form or standard form because it's the opposite of that number for the x value, and that's the y value. That's it. That is the vertex. So those are pretty quick. Um, find A. A is a multiplier. So this would have an A of negative 1. This would have an A of 4. What that does, if it's a number bigger than 1, it makes it skinnier. It, it stretches it. Um, if that's a number between 0 and 1, like a fraction, like 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, it makes it wider. And if it's a negative number, it'll open down instead of opening up. Okay, so this one, what's A? A is just equal to negative 3. But because it's negative, this one opens down, and it's skinnier than normal, not wider than normal, skinnier. The vertex is at negative 4, positive 1. Okay, this one, A is equal to 1. Remember, when there's nothing out front, there's really a 1 there. And so that would open up. The vertex would be negative two zero or positive two zero, and um, that's it. All right. So we're going to look at um, 
more examples of that. So if I just said that too fast, don't worry. We're going to look at on the next page on C5. Let's look at 11 and 12 where they want us to say all this stuff about the um, parabolas that are given. Alright, so number 11. They want us here x minus 1 squared plus 3. So I don't know that we're going to do all four of these, but we'll, we'll do a couple of them. So what's the vertex? They want the vertex of this. That's going to be 1, 3. So it's the opposite of that number and that number for x and y. Uh, they want to know the value of a. a is equal to negative 2. a is just a multiplier in front of this squared term. Uh, they want to know, does the parabola open up or down? So here, A, B, C. It's going to open down. And then D. Uh, find the minimum or maximum value of Y. Well, if we know the vertex, we know it's uh, the maximum because it opens down. And it's at uh, Y equals 3. All right. And then determine if the parabola is a stretch or a shrink. Well, that number is not fractional, so that's going to be a stretch. And let's, uh, double check number 11. Opens down, max, and stretch. Okay, cool. So let's look at um, 2. So that was 11, number 1. Let's look at 11, number 2. They've got y equals 1 fourth x plus 5 quantity squared minus 2. So the vertex is going to be negative 5, negative 2. It's going to open, oh, A is 1 fourth. That's going to open up. It's going to be a minimum now, because it opens up, of Y equals negative 2. And then it's going to be a shrink instead of a stretch. So now look, well, if, we, if we wanted to sketch these with this information, we could get a sketch going. If we know the vertex is 1, 1, 2, 3, we know it's skinnier and it opens down. You kind of draw a skinnier vertex, uh, or a skinnier graph. This one, vertex is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 2, just a sketch, so it, I'm not really looking at it where it intercepts the x and the y axis and all that. Um, it opens up and it's wider. Than normal. And see, so this is the minimum point right there. That is the maximum point. We know if it's a max or a min to determine whether it's opening down because of the negative or opening up because of the positive. All right. Let's do a couple on uh, number 12. So, oh, right, hit the ground. Right. So, number 12, they have. y equals x squared minus x minus 6. And they want us to find an appropriate range or window, find the max or min of y, find the vertex, find the x-intercepts, find the y-intercepts. So they want us to do all of that for this graph. So 
it's not in standard form or vertex form. So we're going to have to, there is an algebraic process to making it into that. That was the completing the square, but we are not going to cover that in here. We are going to, we've got these calculators. Let's make the calculator do the work for us. So we're going to put in x to the second power. You just hit the little square. Don't do that. Minus x minus six. And for right now, we'll do a standard window. So standard window is 10 by 10. So it asks, the first thing it asks is what uh, window, find an appropriate range for X and Y. Well, in this case, it would just be a standard viewing window, negative 10 to 10. And the way you do that is you hit zoom and then you go down to where it says standard and then you hit enter. All right. And that gives you a negative 10 to 10. Now, how, what, how do we know if it's good view? Well, you should be able to see the lowest point where it crosses the x-axis, where it crosses the y-axis. So we can see all that right here. Okay. So now let's say we want to find, uh, let's, let me grab the paper so I can see what they want us to all find. Um, find the minimum value for y. So to find the minimum, that's the vertex. That's basically gonna be the vertex. So what you do is you do second and then trace. That's this button, that's calculate. And now we want a minimum. So we go down to minimum, that's the third one down, and then you hit enter. And now you have to play a little game. It's the left boundary, the right boundary. So you go make sure you're on the left side of the zero, which we are by just right or left clicking these buttons. So I clicked a few to the left, I hit enter. That is the left boundary. Now it says right bound. So we click the little button until we're on the other side of the lowest point. So see how we're on the other side of the lowest point and then we hit enter. And now it's only looking for a minimum value in that range that I just gave it. So I gave it a range for the X values from there to there. It says, take a guess. This one, you can play along if you want to. You can click it to where you look, looks like it's on the bottom and then hit enter, but, or you could just hit enter. And then it tells you exactly what we got here. What do we have? It says 0 0.500000. And y is negative 6.25. So I'm going to round the x. So it said, what was the range? We used a uh, negative 10 by to 10 for both x and y for the range in the domain. Uh, we found the minimum was y equals negative 6.25. That is, we did find the vertex is um, 0.5 comma negative 6.25. But, you know, in that we found the, the minimum. Oh, that's number three, actually. <laughs> so they want us to find the, the vertex. So when we find the minimum, you also find the vertex. And you do them both at the same time. We just want the Y value for the minimum part. Then it says find the X intercepts and find the Y intercept. So to find the X intercepts, um, that's also a little bit of work. I mean, we're going to make the calculator do it, but you got to hit a lot of buttons. Let me show you. So to make the calculator find out where it crosses the x-axis, right there and right there, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate a zero. So that was the second one down. We hit second and then trace and then calculate a zero. And again, it wants boundaries. So you have to click it, left button here, until it's above the x-axis, like above. And then hit enter. And then you have to click it so it is below the x-axis. And then hit enter. 
And now we gave it a range, look for a zero from this range on the X axis. And it says, take a guess, this time I'm not gonna play, I'm just gonna hit enter. And then it tells us negative two zero. So that's one of the X intercepts is negative two comma zero. Now we have to find the other. So we do second, calculate, we go down to zero, you hit enter. And this time we wanna right click it until it is below the X axis, hit enter. And so it sets it and then right click it until it is above the X axis, and hit enter. And then just hit enter again. And it reads out three comma zero. So those are the x-intercepts. It crosses the x-axis at negative two and three. The y is much easier to find where it crosses y. All we have to do is find the value. Let me show you. So this one, we don't need all this right left boundary stuff. We just go calculate a value. When x is zero, what is y? So you just hit enter and then it clicks it X, when x is 0, y is negative 6. That's still a lousy scene. So uh, 0, negative 6. So there we go. So it's a lot easier to find all this stuff when this is in um, vertex form. And so don't worry about writing the, all these, um, you, we're not gonna write programs to, to do this stuff, all right? So that is it for Handout C.